Hello and welcome to Stiff Joints. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Doctor Who B&M 2019 The Two Doctors Collectors Set. So, sit back and enjoy. So, the first figure in the set is a Perry. Now, uh, I this is the first Perry I've ever gotten because there have been, uh, I want to say a couple. One with Sil from Vengeance on Varos and uh, one from Attack of the Cybermen, and this figure is, it's, it's okay, you know, it's very, um, oh, well, I want to say fairly accurate to the actual, uh, to her appearance in The Two Doctors with this horrible jacket kind of thing. Uh, head sculpt, uh, it's reused from another one, but it's a very, very good head sculpt. Uh, they've painted on this uh, band here, rather than sculpting a new kind of thing, which is a bit of a shame, but it's okay. But the biggest problem, and it's it's not uh, very obvious, but it's the arms. They're oh, they're so long. Um, now, in in the story, she has uh, short sleeves, so to try and emulate this. Uh, on a set where they couldn't actually sculpt shorter sleeves, they've given her sort of longer hands, like there's more wrist. And I would rather have them just to have given her hands uh, rather than having this weird looking figure with sort of monkey arms. It just it doesn't look right. Can't really seem to get this to focus. Let's bring it closer again. There we go. Um, uh, the joints, uh, well, it's your standard peri figure, but I've never had one, so it's a swivel up, uh, upper arm, this, and a swivel at the wrist, and uh, I don't know if the legs, oh, they do, they do, but I was too frightened to move them. You know, they move, and uh, that's a swivel, and then that's just a basic joint, nothing at the feet, uh, head can do a full 360, and um, that's about it. Uh, that is it. Maybe oh, swivel at the waist as well. Uh, but it's a it's an alright figure apart from the arms. From say torso and up, it's it's good. Um, but it could be better if they just f didn't do this with the arms. Ugh. So this next figure is Andragon Patrick Troughton. The big difference here is that he's got his. Orange eyebrows, it's a very strange story. Um, he's got his grey hair. Now this was seen in the uh, 12, 12, 13 Doctor set a couple, couple years ago. I never got that. I didn't know about it until uh, recently actually. But it's, I think I think it's your standard second Doctor figure. I think the shoes are a different colour. They're uh, just a solid brown. Uh, they don't look incredible or anything. But if, if that's what they were in the story, at least they tried. He's got... I was almost say the handkerchief is different, but yeah, again, I'm not sure. But it's a, a normal second Doctor figure. I would have rather them not to give him the orange eyebrows, because I don't think they went the full way, the, ho the whole way, because he had a hat when he was in Andragon, but they haven't given him it. And I would rather just have a second Doctor uh, with the greyer hair, because um, I, I didn't get that, and uh, I don't think any, many other people would have gotten it. So it's a shame they didn't just make it a normal second Doctor, and they've had to make it this weird Andragum. It just it doesn't it doesn't work. I don't know. And now for the final figure of the set, it's the one I've been most excited to get out of every B and M set this year. It's a uh, group Marshall Stike from the Two Doctors. Uh, he was the two. Uh, well, he was the Sontaran in the Two Doctors, and um, well, it, it's it's a it, it's a good figure. It does have problems, but the best thing is this head sculpt. It is incredibly accurate. Mostly, the eyebrows are, might be a little much. I don't think they were that um, sort of uh, bright. Uh, I think the, the little beard is uh, f fairly accurate, uh, I think. The the colour of his head is very good. They've gotten that, they've nailed the, the whole sculpt to the head. It's the, the 
the eyebrows that are a bit, you know, wonky. But uh, even light falls in it the same way with the shadow in the eyes, because you can barely see his eyes in the story. So that that's very accurate. It's a, oh, it's so good. Um, they have reused the body from every other Zontar, and I think it'll be Lynx, because he's got this weapon holder. But the problem is, he doesn't come with a gun. He only comes with a helmet. Um, so that's very annoying, because I think they could have given him the his gun, because they've the, there's a the the um, the Suntaran set has two Suntarans that both come with helmets, and they both come with their gun. I don't understand why they couldn't give him his gun, because then uh, basically the whole set would have two accessories for only one figure, which doesn't seem like too much you know, money would have to be put into that. Because this is a, you know, a stake made with very little money because they, they, for some reason, can't spend very much on the figures anymore. Um, meaning they can't sculpt very much new apart from the head. Because um, the probic, probic vent or whatever it's called, probic, I can't remember, is the wrong shape because they're reusing it from a uh, Lynx. This is, I think this is Lynx, possibly. Because uh, it's definitely not. I have a Stire. I have a Stire, but I don't have a Lynx. Um, also, the belt is, uh, it's the wrong belt, but to try and make it look like the right one, they've not painted the whole thing, which is a little strange, but you can tell they tried. Uh, the the shoulder guards as well as the knee guards uh, they've been taken away and replaced with these painted things to represent the sort of slimmer ones that were used in the story, um, which is uh, interesting. I wasn't sure about it when I first heard about it, but it's not too bad. Um, it also has these uh, boots, but these are meant to be shoes because they're different color. Uh, I don't know what these were. I don't know. It's very. It's a strange figure. He also has the communicator, which is also inaccurate apparently, but it, you can barely notice it. Um, so that's okay. And I think the sleeves might be wrong, but they're not too wrong. I think. I don't think. I think they're just a straight line across the wrist. But for the figure, they've well, they've just used. Um, the older Suntarans. So, for um, articulation, the head can kind of move left to right, but not all the way. So, that's, um, it's not too bad. Uh, honestly, I was surprised by how much range of movement he's got. His, um, how is it, the biceps kind of swivel, but the, the chunkiness of his body sort of stopped that. And uh, this is hinge here. And then a swivel at his hand, um, and the same for this arm, he swivel at the waist, uh, and then there's sort of, uh, joints there. The legs do move uh, on a swivel as well here, yes, haven't done that, so I was very st scared they were stiff for a, v a very long time. And then there's a, just a joint here, and that's it for articulation so it's a, it's a fairly well articulated figure so uh, the accessory he comes with is his helmet which is I don't know if it's fully accurate there's a sort of pattern kind of thing here with an arrow pointing down to this I think that might be accurate but I don't think they had the, um, the sort of ventilation holes uh, but yeah, again, this is a money thing where they can't seem to spend the money on actually um, making a new head sculpt or a new helmet sculpt. Sorry, um, it's, it it goes on fairly well, but it's a a little bit of a pain because uh, um, you can have to angle it quite a lot to, for it to go in, and it doesn't quite look right. But it does stay on, and um, you just kind of take it off like that. 
So uh, that does look good, and they've painted the eyes the because this is Lynx's helmet. I think I said that possibly uh, they painted the eye holes black because uh, well the problem with it is that there's only one scene where they have the helmet on, but it's like from really far away and it's for like a second. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm surprised they gave him a helmet, to be honest, because there's two Shontarans in there, and only one wears the helmet, and it's not him. But uh, another inaccuracy would be the lack of white strips on his uh, shoulders to represent his uh, uh, ranking as Group Marshal, which is, I want to say that's a slight shame. I know people aren't too bothered, but... For the sake of it being accurate, I would have liked to have seen it. But overall, I'm very pleased with this because I have waited um, over a decade to have a stake figure. Because I remember seeing the, the the two doctors for the first time and really, really liking the Sontarans in it. And I made a custom like a couple, three, four years ago. It's just, it's okay, but I think the fact that I made a custom figure just shows how desperate I was for this figure. And when I found out about it, I was just, oh, yes! I was the most happy person on the planet. And I think, as Doctor Who figures go, I think I'm almost nearing the end of the ones I need. Uh, there might, there's only two more that I want now. That'd be a season 18... Uh, fourth Doctor and um, the black Vok robot uh, D84 but that would be it for me so that was the two Doctors B&M set I, I'm very happy with how Stike has turned out because he is better than I thought he was going to be I think Perry could be a bit better and I'd rather the second Doctor not be an Andronom but they, they're they okay those figures but Stike is the, the real kind of figure you buy the set for because um, now we have every classic series on Taran so I'm very happy about that and I'm very pleased with how he turned out because I was very apprehensive after hearing about the, the sort of cutbacks they had to make. But thank you for watching. More v reviews to come. So thank you.